Okay, welcome back to Velocity Conference. That's the hashtag VelocityConf, C-O-N-F. Velocity C-O-N-F. Use that hashtag on all the tweets. I'll try to use them on all the tweets. I had four I called Fluent Conference. We were not at the Fluent Conference, we were at the Velocity Conference. This is the, the end of day one of two days of live coverage, Silicon Angle and Wikibons. Exclusive coverage of Riley Media's Velocity Conference. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. This is theCUBE. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Max Furtman is here. Uh, he is a speaker at this conference. He's an IT master. He's a mobile and web developer, a trainer. Maximiliano, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank As you for inviting me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Are you filming right now? Or are you at <laughs> the... No, no, I'm not filming. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But I can take a picture if you want. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I said this is our second guest with Google Glass now. We, we, uh, we expect many more. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you, what do you, you think? Of, what do you think of Google Glass? Tell us what the experience. So, I have been using it for maybe three weeks, and um, I think it's a it's a really nice device. It's a still like uh, an empty box, so I, I want to do more with it, and right now I cannot. So I think it's going to change with software updates and uh -huh. and and uh, the problem right now is the battery, right? But so if they can solve the battery problem. So we had we so with Fluent Conference we tried to get you on at the Fluent Conference, but your session was so packed and the demand for your time was so high, we yeah, couldn't, exactly. we couldn't get you to come <laughs> on, on the Fluent. Cube. I, I did a glass talk, a glass development talk, and it was uh, yeah. Really interesting. Are you concerned about the OptiGrab syndrome? You know that? You know, remember the movie The Jerk? <laughs> you remember that? They did the OptiGrab and they, they ended up like this. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the um, development. Obviously, I'm a big fan of Google Glass. I was talking about it fluent. Dave and I having debates even last night, going in the wee hours of the morning. He, uh, I think it's really great innovation and I think it's exciting. It's only generation one. Uh, but it's still yet to be discovered truly what it's going to be. Obviously, it is what it is now. But for generation one, pretty elegant. I'm very, I'm very impressed with my pair that I have. In fact, I gave it to my son for his graduation <laughs> gift uh, uh, for high school. Oh, you gave it to him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. And he's coding Does with it. Does he use them? Or? Yeah, he uses them. And he's coding? I told him I want to make sure I get the B-roll. Uh, it's like being 18 again. You know, so you have to see everything. So, um, so you're obviously developing for Google Glass, right? You've been experimenting. And yeah, yeah, exactly. So what's uh, that like? What's the environment like? So right now we have the the now and the future. So the now you can create only cloud-based apps. So that means you have some kind of restrictions using sensors because you can just push information and receive some action from from that information. Um, but in the future, in the next couple of months, we're going to have a GDK. The CDK is for creating native apps. So there we will have, we will see the full power of this device there, right, with the CDK. So what is the development strategy now? Because that's something that everyone wants to know. So when they get to Google Glass, what are the first things you can do? What coding, how do you write code? Obviously you got an Android companion app that uh -huh. works great. iPhone really is kind of like weak. Um, but you really need an Android phone. So what's the, give us the, the, the 101 Break it down for us. From a developer's perspective? Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh, from well, a user's perspective? Well, user who wants the code. I mean, okay. assume that it could be a high school student up through, okay, great. say, so college So basically, kid. now, again, with the API that is available right now, you need to develop web apps. It's really not using HTML, but using basically any server-side technology, like Java, Node.js, PHP, .NET. Any server-side technology can create, today, apps for the glass. These are known as glassware. So uh, it's, it's really simple. There is a lot of examples on the Google website that you can start from, so you, you don't need to start from scratch. Uh, with maybe 10 lines of code, you have your first Google Glass app or up and running. So it's, it's really easy right now. One of the biggest challenges that you found, obviously I compared the Google Glass to the first generation Apple computer. If you go to Google and just search on Apple One, you'll see how, you know, how, how early it was, and now obviously it's Apple's Apple, but you know, this is an elegant product, um, so I want to ask you, what are the challenges that you found? Well, right now, uh, the challenges are basically interaction, because this is cloud-based, so basically I receive information, I can tap on my glass, and I can send actions to a server, and then I need to wait for the re response, so the, the, the live interaction is still not so simple for custom apps, right? But hopefully, with the CDK coming in a couple of months, we will have any kind of apps uh, running so in damn offline. It's the damn network right now. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's the other problem. For example, here we have uh, free Wi-Fi, but the problem is that I need to sign up on the, on the Wi-Fi, and I cannot do that with the glass. So I'm using my 3G connection or 4G connection. Which, but your 3G um, or sometimes 4G. it's not working, yeah. so 
Uh, that's an issue, right? Well, maybe we'll let you into the cube Wi-Fi. <laughs> we got our. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but you still got to. You, you can't. You got to use your companion app to program it. So yeah, right. you're going to see. Well, my vision is pretty clear on this one. I, I think, Dave, it's going to be a very, com uh, L, um, very relevant companion device to. Fitbits, Internet of Things, uh, uh, wearable computers, and your phone becomes your base station for yourself, right? Yeah. Your phone is your key clicker for <laughs> devices, or device, it's going to be more than just a yeah, phone. Yeah, that's important because a lot of people believe this is the replacement of a phone, and right now it's more a companion, right? It's not the replacement. I cannot, uh, I cannot search for my email, for example. I can just receive the emails that are important to me, and that's all. So I cannot do anything I do with my phone with the glass right now. And the idea is to just some quick interactions, some taking a picture so quickly, uh, read some news, and that's all, right? So that's the idea. Not to replace the phone today, at least. Yeah, so the, 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 the function will obviously improve. Mm -hmm. and, and presumably the footprint will, will change. I mean, will these become my Google Glass someday? Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, it, it, I, I don't think that Google is going to sell this device. It will be like a smartphone. Not a 1500 so bucks a pop. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but it will be shot from Samsung, from from HTC, you're going to buy these uh, glasses from, even from uh, glass companies, mm -hmm. right? So. Yeah, so uh, Mark Hopkins, I was talking to Mark off camera today, he said Epson actually, it was, it was, I think it was Epson you said has a really cool, uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but, but very uh -huh. nice uh, Yeah, Ray-Ban. Well. Yeah, yeah, those uh, kind of companies. John wears Ray-Bans, <laughs> those are cool. So those are your future Google yeah. Glass there, buddy. Well, I'm a big believer of Google Glass. I hope it takes off, and I want to see that screen get better. But I think it's going to be, it's one of those things, Dave, it's like, like the iPhone was really a, a paradigm shift because everyone got what a phone was and knew how to use a, yeah. a computer. It was elegant, it was easy to use, so of course the App Store accelerates that, and it goes supernova, it's adoption. Google Glass is not like that. It's a little bit different. It's not yet known yet where the killer app is, so I think Google's smart to release it to developers, and I think this is the kind of strategy that always works. Put it out in the open, see what happens with Maps, it. Maps, I mean, GPS is, was, is a killer app. I mean, Yeah, that's the GPS really, right now is gorgeous. I mean, yeah. I mean that's got to be cool. My, my understanding, again, I haven't used it, but, but Mark was describing that in some of these systems, you actually draws a line on the road. Yeah, and that's, you know, over my site, so it's, it's not over the road, yeah, right? But, so but that's coming, right? So, yeah, so exactly. and John, you know with my sense of direction how useful that feature <laughs> would be. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We really appreciate it. We're getting down to day one. We've got our last segment and wrap up coming up. So stay tuned. We're here at the Velocity Conference breaking down all the analysis and commentary. Of course, our opinion weaved in there. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>